Welcome back. Today we're going to be discussing a subject I've covered in one of my very first videos and has resurfaced two years later. I'm going to be talking about the hugely and immensely talented feminist Emma Solkowitz. You remember her, right? She's the girl that said she was raped by a guy. University, of course, took that in the wrong direction. She then decided as a protest and for her thesis, which got accepted by Columbia University, to carry her mattress around the campus. She got a lot of publicity for this, going so far as to spend a bit of time with one of those precious US senators that we all respect so much. Because women's rights and everything. Listen and believe rather than look at the evidence, which was later discovered to be totally falsified. So Emma, to double down, decided she'd make this, which I can't show you, but I will gladly link below if you want to see a poorly constructed reenactment of her supposed sexual assault. She's since gone on to do this, which I'm going to include a clip from my stream on. Well, she's she's back in the news. She's doing this. Um, she she's there? doing this. Uh, channeling her rage through BDSM art piece oh. to which uh, tackles the question of the value of art under the Trump administration. I'll get some pictures, because I think this is magnificent. <laughs> it's um, but not... yeah, she, she gets tied up and I'm supposed to send a message. I don't know, what, is it contemporary art, or is it just really, oh really my God, weird? It's rape fantasy. That's what it is. She has fantasies about rape. She must have a rape fantasy. She must, that must be what it is for her, though, because that's all she does, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's also, it seems, it's... I don't think it's so much uh, happens it with working class uh, kids, uh, millennials, but uh, mm. it's like the middle class and higher. Oh Christ! Please put it away. Put it away. Oh, put it away I've now. Got oh, I've got more. Oh, I've got oh, more. Oh, oh, there it is. Hell. There's the money shot. He's also whipping. Oh, look, the belts out as what well. What the fuck did I just? <laughs> <laughs> what did I join back to? <laughs> oh, hang on. Look, fucking hell. Emma I looks so proud. <laughs> you know what? I, oh. I I have a theory with all right. They do these sorts of weird, shitty art projects, and they don't really create anything else of value because they fucking can't, because they're just talentless fucks. Yeah. And has resurfaced again, kind of, because the man she accused has been not only exonerated somewhat, given a half assed apology, but also got compensation from the university for it. So I thought we'd have a look at a couple of articles related to this and just talk about false rape claims. As I did two weeks ago, it seemed relevant to bring it back up now. Columbia gives half-assed apology to exonerated student accused by Mattress Girl. Columbia University has settled the gender-based harassment lawsuit brought by ex-student Paul Nungesa for its alleged encouragement of his rape accuser's Carry the Weight art project. The Carry the Weight art project was actually a performance piece that became Emma Solkowitz's thesis, which Columbia University accepted. When it was proven Emma Solkowitz had lied, it wasn't like Columbia jumped at the opportunity to punish her. She had quite the following and quite a large profile courtesy of media exposure. The same could not be said for the victim, the real victim. And the fact you settled makes me laugh so much. Almost as if, if it had gone to court, you would have lost a lot more. Emma Solkowitz had received academic credit for the project, which protested Columbia's exoneration of Nungesa. Nungesa? Nungesa? Which, if anything, is an absolute confirmation that it was, in fact, harassment. It was a targeted harassment campaign that she got credit for against somebody that had done nothing wrong to her. Oh, wait. 
Was it because they refused to do something to her sexually again? Columbia student-run publication, Wog, published the June 10th order from the Second U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals, which was hearing Nungesser's appeal for of a lower court order against his suit. A year ago, the Second Circuit reinstated a similar reverse discrimination lawsuit filed by another Columbia male student. As I had never heard the term reverse discrimination before, I thought it wise to read the definition for others who may also not know what it means. Reverse discrimination is discrimination against members of a dominant or majority group in favour of members of a minority or historically disadvantaged group. This all makes a bit more sense now. It reminds me of reverse sexism and reverse racism. The administration emailed the College Fix a statement late Thursday night. Paul Nungesser and Columbia University have agreed to settle the lawsuit he filed in 2015. While Paul was a student at Columbia, he was accused of sexual misconduct. In November 2013, after a diligent and thorough investigation, Paul was found not responsible for any misconduct. Columbia University stands by that finding. The real shame in all of this is that while you have found him to be innocent, while it is proven he is not guilty, and you have had to pay out for that. Miss Solkowitz is not being held accountable. She should be. False rape claims should be punishable. She should be in prison. She made it up and has made a career of oppression, using lies and deceit to go somewhere. Now, of course, eventually she's going to become irrelevant, like she pretty much is now, as this is kind of like the final part of her well, saga. But the fact remains, she's not really had any kind of backlash for this. Past the online community that has called her out, it's not like the mainstream media that lauded her for being so brave and so strong and independent and powerful, and that poxy senator. It's not like they then turned on her. It's not like they made an effort, a concerted effort, to say, oops, we're very sorry to Paul Nungessa for promoting somebody who lied about what you did not do to her. In 2015, Paul graduated from Columbia in good standing as a distinguished John Jay Scholar. John Jay Scholars like Paul are recognised for their remarkable academic and personal achievements, dynamism, intellectual curiosity and original thinking. Paul is currently enrolled at an internationally recognised film school and has launched a career as a filmmaker. Columbia recognises that after the conclusion of the investigation, Paul's remaining time at Columbia became very difficult for him. Do any of you see why this is a half assed apology? Considering what he was put through, I would have replaced very difficult with almost untenable. No one should have to go through that. When it was proven he was innocent, you should have punished Emma Solkowitz. Who cares about the media? Who cares about all of that publicity she was getting? You should have gotten rid of her. She was toxic to you. Who cares if she's an ethnic minority? Who cares that she's female? Who cares if what she's doing may accomplish something? She's a bad person. And what she did made someone else's time at university unbearable. And you did nothing to actually stop it. You saw the video earlier of the graduation ceremony where Emma Solkowitz brought her mattress up to that graduation platform. She was told not to do that but I don't see anyone stopping her once she put it there. Someone should have. Someone should have taken that mattress off her and said this mattress deserves to be free from your taint. And not what Columbia would want any of its students to experience. Columbia will continue to review and update its policies towards ensuring that every student accuser and accused, including those like Paul who are found not responsible, is treated respectfully and as a full member of the Columbia community. It's a shame it took such a shock to the system after the initial case was thrown out and he won the appeal to force you to pay him a decent amount of money and issue an apology, quotes, apology, because you had violated Title IX. This was, in effect, anti-male discrimination. And to restate, you gave credit for a protest against a guy that she claimed had raped her when it was proven by yourselves that not to be the case. Give her credit for it. Nungesser's lawyer Andrew Miltenberg, who has represented students accused of rape across the country, released a statement saying the ex-student and his family were very pleased with the settlement, for which they fought three long years. It gives Paul a chance to go on with his life and recover from the false accusation against him. We hope that the resolution of the case also ensures that no student will ever have to endure what Paul went through after he was exonerated. We are extremely happy that Paul can now fully focus on following his passion and talent as an aspiring filmmaker. A criminal defense lawyer who has closely the case, Scott Greenfield, called Columbia's conciliatory statement half-assed but claimed the settlement included good money for Nungesser. I hope that whatever Paul Nungesser does in the film industry, he succeeds. I hope he lives a long and happy life and he forgets this ever happened, which is unlikely. I hope he's never discriminated against because of the past, 
because of something he didn't do. The same cannot be said for Emma Solkowitz. I hope she fails at whatever she does, and I hope one day she can apologise for what she's done, because what she did could have destroyed someone's life, as if those protests weren't bad enough. Proof of rape culture born out of a lie. Anyway, thank you all for listening.